Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Art Collab with Sarah and Nat. Nat and Sarah. Today's episode is Challenge Accepted. Yeah. <laughs> So we're waiting for you guys to come in because today we're doing it the first time with guests. Um, there will be a recording of this. It will be go up as a uh, podcast too, but we also encourage you guys to um, chat with us and ask us questions if you want. Sarah, where are you? I'm in Maryland. Whoop. Yeah. Don't you know that? She made this really <laughs> cool stamp. Did you guys see the um i don't know if you saw her video for the maryland uh flag that was so cool she made me laugh so much too yeah i had like the maryland t-shirt i had the hat and i i rolled in on my <laughs> on my on my chair in the beginning of the video so i really had fun with that one because in maryland we love we are fanatics about our flag so i feel like it's the best flag I did not know that. And it is actually a really cool flag. We also have people from Arlington, Texas, Bellevue, Washington, Ireland. Amazing. Ireland. Nice. That is cool. Iowa, um, Indiana, Phoenix, Arizona. That's early. No, it's not too bad, though. It's nine o'clock, right? We have England, Connecticut. Hi, guys. So Thank you so much for joining us. That's so cool. My sister's on. Yay! <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, um, so, so as you guys know, this is a Zoom class, not a class. In case uh, I got one email, someone asked um, if there are supplies or something. If you're here because you think it's a class, we're really sorry. It's not a class. Um, we're we're talking about you know topics every time we do the Zoom cast. Yeah. We're challenged, we challenged each other. We're talking about challenges. And we already have something prepared for the next show where we actually surprise each other with something on camera. We have no clue. And you will see how we have no clue. So we will see how that goes, right? Yeah, that will be at the end of today's episode. So we actually sent each other boxes um, that we have been really good. And we're going to unveil them at the end of the episode. So that way you'll know what we'll be working with for our next episode. So exactly. <laughs> so this one was um, challenge accepted. And um, Sarah and I came up with the, I don't know if you guys have seen it already, the April Art Foamies um, challenge. We are both designers for uh, Art Foamies. And we were talking about challenges um sarah do you want to let them know how we actually came up with the challenge and how the prompt how we came up with the prompt and stuff yeah sure so you know that we have like there's a lot of different challenges that that it happened throughout the year so you know there's inktober carve december uh, i think there was used to be pattern january and printer solstice and yeah, you know, I, we thought, well, why don't we do something for our foamies? Because we, you know, we're our foamies designers. Let's let's come up with something. And since it begins with the letter A, we thought, oh, April's coming. That'll be a perfect time to um, unveil these prompts. And honestly, we were going to like think it over first before we came up with the prompts. But we actually just stayed on the call with each other and just came up with thirty-one. <laughs> Well, the funniest thing was we were adding this stuff to the, um, to, we have a little Google sheet, right? Yeah. And then later we didn't even remember who came up with no, which one. No, we didn't. Cause she, I was like, she thought that I came up with hip hop and I'm like, I don't think so. And so then I, then I, cause I actually hand wrote mine and took a picture of it and sent it to her. And I was like, oh no, no, that was you, sweetie. That was you. I still have no idea why <laughs> hip hop. <laughs> I'm still wondering what we're going to make for that day. This, you know, FYI. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So um, the reason why we were talking about challenges is because um, challenges are all, all around. And we were 
you know, people love to um, join in, in challenges and we both actually like challenges a lot, but why do we like challenges? Sarah, what do you think is for you the appeal um, of a challenge and how do you approach challenges? I think it's really the prompts. Uh, I know that there are some people out there who don't like doing the prompts or following the prompts, but to me, I think it's a challenge for me to come up with something based on the word that is given and being creative with that word. Um, and then also, I think I learn more about myself. I feel like the last, like, see the last, last carb December challenge that I did, I didn't even think that I was going to do it, but I did words. I carved a lot of words that month and um, which I normally don't do. I mean, I have carved words in the past, but to consistently, you know, over a, cer a certain amount of days, I carved words and I really enjoyed doing that. And I use my own handwriting. So I didn't like go on Photoshop and, you know, print things off and transfer the image. No, I literally hand wrote my words. And so I really enjoyed that process. And so I feel like challenges are good because it pushes you to another level, a level that you didn't think you were going to be. So I, I suggest that everyone get involved in one. And it's not really about the artist that is creating the challenge. You think you're doing it for them, but are you really doing it for yourself? Right. So yeah. Do you feel, so, um, I feel the same way that a challenge is actually just like making it really um, just to get me a little bit out of a rut, kind of like, okay, what am I going to do now? Sometimes it gets me using uh, materials or things that I haven't used in a long time. Um, but I know that people are sometimes like really upset if they start a challenge and then they can't keep up with it. But I think the point is that you're your own boss, applesauce, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like if you're not, um, like if you're missing a day, why are you so hard on yourself? Just step in the next time, right? Like it's a 30, it's 31 days. Let's say you miss a day, right? And you feel like stressed. You shouldn't feel stressed about doing something that is fun for you. That's how I feel. Yeah, there have been times where, yeah, I missed a day or two or three. So I did all three of them in one print. Right. And I said, hey, these are for days 14, 15, and 16. Yay. <laughs> so that's acceptable. You, we can do that. Yes. yes. Oh, not for our challenge, but I'm saying <laughs> that's what I have done. No, 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 no. This is our challenge. If we're going to, no, if we're going to be the leaders in this challenge, we got to do all of them. <laughs> but so I'm Gabrielle saying if says, according to someone else's challenge, you can, you know, skip a few days, whatever. But I'm saying that we created this, so we, we have to finish it, right? <laughs> So Gabrielle says challenges are an invitation to embrace insecurity and the unknown. I like I that. Do. Yeah. So um, how did you approach this challenge? Like, do you have a theme for this one, um, Sarah? Um, did you put some margins around it? Like I did, I will tell, I tell you guys later, but well, why don't I do it now? And then it's clear what I'm asking, maybe, right? <laughs> so I, for me, it was like, okay, I did an uh, Art Foamies challenge uh, two years ago or one year ago, and I uh, tried to f show all the ways you can use a uh, foam stamp with other paint media, for example, right? So I was like, that, I can't do that again. That's kind of like, you know, that would be cheating kind of boring. I want to do something that is different. So I was thinking about how could I possibly make it work for me that I will be able to do the challenge without giving up, um, but also without being it too easy. So I thought, well, I'm not using um, ink pads uh, a lot. Like I do sometimes, but I usually use my art foamies with acrylic paint. And I was like, okay, Sarah, challenge accepted. She uses a lot of ink pads. Why don't I use that too? But then on top of it, I told myself I'm going to do 
to make it kind of easier, it's going to be a pattern every time, right? So I gave myself some kind of constraint that makes it easier just by like, okay, you make another pattern and you're going to use ink pads. But then I was like, no, 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 too easy then. So I, uh, I'm doing it in a ledger. So every pattern has to be an ink in an uh, 125 year old ledger. That's how I uh, put that in a frame for myself. So my question to you, Sarah, was um, meant like, did you kind of like, besides just the prompts that we have, did you put something else around it that you um, made as a guideline for yourself for the challenge that we're doing? Yeah, so I did the kind of the opposite where I was going to incorporate acrylic paint in my pieces on um, this go around since I don't use, I typically do not use paint in my work. And uh, so, <laughs> and um, if I had used paint, I mean, that's not true, but if I had used paint, I would use like my gel press and then, you know, print with it. But this time I used a paintbrush and painted the background and then printed on top, which is something that I've never done before. So, yeah. So how did you like that? It was a freeing experience because like I was not constrained. So it's not like when you are printing with something, it's going to look exactly like the stamp that you have. Whereas if you have your hand and you can just move it around and make little squiggles and X's, I mean, I'm just really focusing on X's, O's and squiggles. That's what I'm gonna be doing in the background. But um, so that way I'm not really trying to do something like a painter cause I'm not, I'm not a painter, but I do like the, the way the paint strokes. Like if you make an X, and sometimes the paint is a little bit thinner in some places and then a little bit thicker in some places. I love that effect, especially when you print on top of it. Mm -hmm. It just adds dimension. If you see in this piece that I have here, um, the, ink, the paint that I use is metallic. Mm -hmm. And I really, really like that. And so that's what I'm saying with these challenges um you find out what you like and what you don't like and so i think i'm when i do go off and you know after this challenge and make my work i'm going to incorporate more metallic acrylic ink and i then, found it challenging with the inks um and i still do find it challenging uh i think one of the problems not problems but one of the things is that um that the uh ledger paper although it is so old, um, the ink kind of sits on top. Yeah. So it takes like a total long time to dry. And then when you add another layer on top of it, you know, because, you know, you want to do a, the queen of layers, right? That's Sarah. So oh, I'm like, I'm going to do that too. Um, <laughs> it's challenging to do that because it, it um, it's, I learned a lot about how the ink sits on different paper. I never thought about that the ink reacts differently to um, paper, like different paper. Mm -hmm. And then also when it dries, it looks differently as well. Um, but I do enjoy, I really do enjoy the uh, kind of quickness of it and the crispness of um, using the ink. Um, so I'm definitely, I, I'm definitely going to use it way more after the challenge um, as well that I'm pretty sure of, even though we're just at six, day six. Yeah. Right. Well, I feel like we, I feel like we accomplished a lot in those six days. Don't you? I do. Yeah. Right. Uh huh. So I have, um, I have, a, we uh, had a couple of questions for ourselves. So we wanted to ask. Um, I already asked you about the acrylic paint uh, mm -hmm. thing, but then, um, so there is, I think it is the print that you have on the table right now here. And um, you said you, um, you posted it, not the elephant one, the other one. Oh, this one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think you posted it. Is that the one that you posted? And then you said, I'm gonna add something more to it, right? 
Yes, this is the one. <laughs> They're just so cool. So my question to you is, so if you go on Instagram, you see our Instagram handles in the name, but when um, Sarah posted it initially uh, on the day, um, you said, I don't know, it's not, there's something I have to add to it. Yes, yes. What was it that made you, um, um, what was it that made you, um, uh, you know, know or think that you need to do that? Well, what I often do with my prints is, well, especially because I'm in my living room, this is my center of work here. Um, I leave the print out on my table or on my living room table behind here. So just so I could look at it. But what was happening is when I would walk by it, something said, it needs, it needs a little bit more. I don't know what it is. I need a little bit more. So then I printed the same stamp. This is yours. This is actually Natalie's stamp that she designed for um, our foamies and it's called Fatigue Pattern One. And I went and reprinted in opaque, I'm sorry, translucent white. And that finished it. And then I made it into a zine. That is so cool. Structure. And I did print on the other side, not with any of, I'll use, I used a stamping ink for the other side. So it's a little bit more matte than um, glossy. So there's a, you know, there's a distinct difference between the outside and the inside of it, so. I love how sculptural uh, that is when you put it up like that. It looks so cool. So is it done now? It is done now. How do you know? <laughs> because it's not yelling at me. It's, I don't hear anything. It just feels complete. Do feel you like ever go back to, um, those pieces and say, I want to add like, okay, so right now it's not talking to you anymore. Right. It's right. Quiet. Right. But like, did you ever have it that like a year later you might walk by and then it's, it, it talks out to you and you're like, oh, I need to do something. Yeah. Or are you like, if, if it's quiet, it's quiet. It will be quiet. Yeah, I agree. So like my, when I did my um, thesis project. So the thesis project where I made a game, a game where you, it basically, it was about the plight of the African-American people and it had cards. So when you read the card, you could progress forward or backward. And um, so I made the background print from Centra. Centra is like a PVC plastic and I printed it in layers. I was doing layers back then. This is 2016. I printed it in layers. And then at the end, in the center, I um, screen printed plus or minus in the middle. So that's what the name of the game was, plus or minus. So you read the card and you would go forward or backward depending on what you read. So, but I had made like, I don't know, 10 or 15 backgrounds. And, um, but I only printed the plus or minus on like five of them. Cause I, my goal was just to make five games and to, you know, have them displayed in different um, museums and such. But, you know, I ended up keeping the other 10. Mm -hmm. So last year under quarantine, I pulled them out. And I painted on them and I printed on them and redid them. And I now in my mind, they're complete. But back then they were complete too. But um, when I looked at them last year, I was like, I could do some more. I could do much more with this. Let me push myself and figure it out. And each one of them is different. So each one is painted different. Each one is printed different, but they're a collection. Okay, so this is the ledger. It's gigantic, right? Oh, it's really cool. 
And I actually have another one here on the desk in the background. And that's where I do paintings. And so for example, the painting that you saw as my background um, first, I do those paintings on canvas, but then I also do them in this ledger because I wanna collect these uh, paintings in this kind of like a ward uh, text collecting book. Mm -hmm. So I just bought recently this ledger here, which is a beast and it's super heavy. Can you see? <laughs> So it's really big, it's really hard to photograph. But what I was thinking was, you know, I might come back later. I mean, like right now I'm thinking this is gonna be a pattern book, right, for this challenge. And then I might take it further with some other patterns, but I might come back in a couple years or tomorrow, I don't know, and put something on top of it. Mm -hmm. Use those as backgrounds and, you know, uh, do something else to it. And I think that's uh, that's so fun with those challenges too. Like you can you can always come back and make something more out of it. It was just a prompt and a start for something. What I would suggest you do, just go to our Instagram page or specifically Natalie's Instagram page and you can see all her prints in the ledger. And what I love the most is you can see the writing peeking through. It's the most marvelous thing, so. Yeah, yeah, and we and um we did um both um you did a video too. I did like super short little video clips of each day. So uh you can kind of like see how the ledger um changes, but it's not it's just it's just so different how we both are um doing um the prints. So it's like super super fun. I hope you guys will join us. Um I had one question. A couple of questions. Someone asked me if um, if you can use other stems than ours. Um, I had that question several times, and someone also asked if they can use other foam stem than art foamies. And Sarah yeah. and I are like, yes, you can absolutely. Yeah, what to have? Yeah, I yeah. mean, we're not like we're not the art foamy April challenge police. No. <laughs> And if you make your own, you know, foam stamps, hey, go for it. Like the only thing that I would say is um, just be considerate. Like if you tag, for example, uh, art foamies, and it's not art foamies, like there's nothing that has to do with art foamies, then maybe you know, don't do it. It's not a prop. It's not horrible or something, but it might be like. People are like, oh, I don't know. What is this stem? It's not an art foamies or I can't find it. And then you're like, oh, it was an art foam. You know, like just don't tech brands that maybe are not involved in, in that. But other than that, we want you guys to um, really, really have fun. As Tanya yeah. says, art etiquette, right? Yeah. <laughs> have fun. Exactly. You know, we're so serious about everything. Why can't we just enjoy the moment that you're in when you're making something yeah I think I saw someone who made um handmade um foam stems if I'm right right for the challenge yeah they did. so if you google uh what's just what's our one working <laughs> hashtag art collab <laughs> challenge accepted or Sarah and Nat's challenge accepted are the hashtag Yes, we, we used an ampersand first in the second one. And but that realized it doesn't work. <laughs> it was actually Tanya who told us. She Tanya Ahmed was like, no, no, girls, that's not going to work. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> Oops. You never stop learning. <laughs> so what's our theme for... Uh, oh, you still have some questions for me? Questions, yes. Sorry. I have questions. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. All right. So we all know that Natalie's printing in this 125 year old ledger, which is absolutely yummy. Um, where did you get it and why did you buy it? So um, I love to, I love to go, I know you love thrift stores. Uh, I do love thrift stores. I can't even say it. Like, sorry guys, <laughs> thrift stores. <laughs> sorry. And I also love, um, I love anything like, old and vintage yellow history that's why i love to go 
Uh, that's why I love to paint old buildings, right? And so I got this one ledger that I showed you that's on the, um, on the table and started painting buildings in there. And I was like, it would be so cool to, to have another one and do um, more like an art journal or background in it. Uh, and then um, a friend of ours who is an artist too, Tina Walker, she, uh, I think she did some um, estate sales and uh, like she went to some estate sales and she got all these like ledgers. And I was like, oh my God, this one looks exactly like the one that I already have. It would be so cool uh, to get it. And so um, I bought it off of her and then I was like, it is the perfect one to start like a pattern book because usually I make pattern books, you know, by hand myself. I bind the books after I do the pattern, but I thought it would be so cool to have that as a house. And I don't know something about repurposing, um, you know, it, it's not it's not like a super important history heavy uh, thing, right? It's not like someone is like, oh, we, you're ruining something that should be in a museum. Mm -hmm. This is not. Um, so I was like, it would be so cool to repurpose this. And then maybe in a hundred years, someone else finds it and takes their own spin on it again. You know, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so are you planning to like put it it, you know hide it somewhere and someone comes and gets it and adds to it is that what you're trying to do <laughs> no 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 but I was thinking you know like I don't know I think there's something really cool and and you do that with your with the thrift like you had the wood box in your challenge too and you go to thrift stores right mm -hmm. I think there's something beautiful about things that are just kind of like worthless not like for some people and then you're like but it's a beautiful book and isn't it cool if you just like give it a new purpose and do something different with it I don't know and then maybe someone else is doing that in a hundred years when they find the old ledger with the patterns it's going like this is a cool house <laughs> I'm gonna do something on top of it I don't know <laughs> Or leave it completely the way it is. I don't know. I just feel like when you go to the thrift store and yeah, you could buy a shelf and say, okay, I'm buying it to put books on it. But then you're like, what else can I do with this? This is what I do when I go to the thrift store. When I walk down, especially the wood aisle in the second Avenue thrift store that I go to, there's a wood aisle. So everything in the aisle is made out of wood. So I'm literally looking through, can I print on this? <laughs> I mean, I'm feeling the wood and I'm like, hmm, can this be used for, <laughs> can I hang this on the wall? You know, there's things that I'm thinking of when I'm looking at the item. Um, and I do that when I'm going to the book section too. Like I open up the books and I'm just flipping, 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 looking at the pages, feeling the paper. Is it glossy? If it, is it not? Because I want something matte so I can print right directly on it. So that's what I go to thrift store for. I, I, I do have a full closet of thrift store clothes. I don't need any more clothes, but now I go specifically for items like the, the house, the house items. Those are my favorite areas in the thrift store. So you basically, the items in the thrift store, you're like, okay, challenge accepted. Right. <laughs> I mean, like the one, like I posted on Instagram yesterday, I found those wallpaper tiles that are, that have, um, you can see it on my Instagram that have le their letters. And so the, it was made in 1973 and they literally put those letters across the wall and I'm like, wow. And it was intact. It has the paste and the instructions and everything. And I'm like, I can't bring myself to print on them, but I definitely can use them to make stamps. So I could scan them in, transfer the, the um, image and make stamps from that. Now, that was an amazing find. If you haven't seen it, go on her Instagram page, you see a little video where she shows it. I was like drooling. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want this. Oh, well, I, first of all, I was like, what is this? So then I peeled the tape and I opened it up and I was like, 
And I closed it like, <laughs> put it in the cart. <laughs> Like as, as I, someone said, comes and takes eight dollars, I'm gonna pay the eight dollars. Like I don't care. I'm, I'm. <laughs> let's go. I'm like it's time to go. I don't have to. Be, I don't have to look at anything else. I'm good. Let's just go. <laughs> Do you ever have this feeling when you find something and you're like, let not anyone come right now between me and what I just found in the store. Yeah. Yes. And you, and sometimes you like, you want to scream, but you can't. <laughs> you're like, I can't believe I found this. <laughs> well, you also don't want to show the joy to the person who sells it to you, right? Right. <laughs> As for the price, it could go up like immensely. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, but I'm always like, even though it has no price on it, I still go with a humble heart. Excuse me, there's no price on this. And they're like, oh, I can't sell it to you. But can you talk to the manager, please? Please. And the, <laughs> and the manager come over. I'm like, please, can I have this? I mean, I mean, there's no price tag. And they'll be like, oh, okay, we'll give it to you for $2. I'll be like, but you know, I just I just like oh, bring, bring myself down. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And then when I'm walking out, I'm screaming. <laughs> I just read some of the comments that make me laugh so hard. Diane says, I hyperventilate in thrift stores. Yes. And Leanne says, right, hide the joy until you go to the car. <laughs> that is really funny. You just scream in the car like, I can't believe this, you know? So, yeah, definitely. I used to, oh, I have- One question, one more question for you. Okay. Um, so, and just, so the answer to the question, when someone asked me this question, is usually like, I'll do whatever I want with it. But I'm going to ask you this question. Because you will ask me this all the time. I'm going to ask you what it is. <laughs> what do you plan to do with your ledger when you're done? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that is actually, it's so funny because yes, you are right. This is a question that comes all the time. Like, um, what are you doing with the art or the print or whatever? And I think for like, I, I think I haven't thought about it. And I think yeah. it, like, it's, it's the, it's the journey. It's not like the result that makes me like, it's not, in fact, I'm actually so happy that that thing is so gigantic that I don't even have to ask myself the question right now, because it will take me 500 years to fill that thing up when I'm enjoying the ride as long as it takes, yeah. right? Yes, it was, it's about the enjoyment of making the said thing it doesn't have to have a purpose. Exactly. That's what, that's what I want everyone who's listening on this podcast. Like everything doesn't have to have a purpose. Everything doesn't have to go to someone. Everything doesn't have to be a gift. It's about the pure enjoyment of making the said thing for yourself. Yeah, I think that you just said the essence is basically making something for yourself. Yeah. Like, I don't need a reason to do that, right? I don't need, there, there's so many things that we have to do because we have to do them, right? Like, I just want to take some time for myself and have, have fun. And Lou says, it's always the process that matters to me. Yeah. yeah. The other question then that often gets asked and now I'm going to ask it to you. <laughs> uh, we're, aren't you afraid that your house is going to like be stuffed with too much things? Like no. if you, do you ever throw anything away? No. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> okay. No, I mean. I hear you. I do have recycling and all that stuff, but I'm literally, before it goes in the recycling bin or goes in the trash, I think of what can I do with this? And I actually do make something out of it. That's the thing. It's like, I don't just have a pile of pop tart boxes sitting here. I actually do make books out of it. So 
you know, I have a method to <laughs> my madness. <laughs> my husband says our garage is totally full, but I know what's going to happen to each and every one of these things that I have purchased. I know exactly what I'm going to do with them. No, no, I didn't mean the things that you buy. I meant like when you're done with your prints, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, like, I no. I use them in, you know, collage work. I make books out of them. And I think that is really good for a printmaker to make books out of the prints that they've made. That's what I do. Like, so it ends up being flat sheets of paper and bound into something and then used for something else. So um, I've made boxes out of the prints that I've made. I have um, made altar books with the prints that I've made. So they don't, nothing goes away. That's why I said I keep them. I have a stack like right here next to me of prints that I'm currently working on they can either be framed or put in a book that's where they're going to go so sometimes sometimes I give it to someone else sometimes uh, and I actually I'm the first one to admit I might even look at something 10 years later and I'm like meh and I yeah. throw it away I know that people will be like what I'm like yeah that was a good that was a good time I learned a lot it made me progress but it served and it served its purpose back then. I cannot reuse. I mean, if it's a canvas, I might just paint. I will paint over. I'm not throwing away a canvas, right? But if I can't use it as collage paper or repurpose again, it it will then it it's okay. I it had its surface. It was cool. Yeah, exactly. Um, Gabriella says, if I would have to have an answer to that question, what do you do with all whether you're creating? I would have to stop right away. That's so true. That is true. So that I'm like, don't ask people that question. That's <laughs> because we don't have to have a reason for everything that we make. We just look for the pure enjoyment of making it. That's it. Right. That was cool. So do we, oh, wait, I saw some questions. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, guys. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> Let's do that before we go to our next thing, opening boxes and see what we each other send each other. So Tanya says, I would love to hear Sarah's story behind the I'm speaking stamp, please. Birgit says, uh, me too. Um, they're both in Europe. So I think that might explain the reason why they're asking. <laughs> okay, so um, in my former life, I was a human resources manager. And uh, any time that I spoke up during a meeting, I was either spoken over or interrupted or, um, or immediately after finishing my statement, someone would say, a man would say exactly what I said. And whatever I said was completely pushed aside. Um, and I remember towards the end of my tenure at this company, uh, one of the last meetings that I attended, someone said exactly what I said. And I stood up and said, I just said that. <laughs> and then that's when it was like completely like the last straw, right? So fast forward to the presidential election and Kamala Harris is um, during the vice presidential debate. And you know, the current vice president at the time who will not be named, um, had his two minutes. He had his two minutes, right? And then when it came to go to Kamala Harris, Senator Kamala Harris at the time, they asked her, you know, she said, asked her the question and she's supposed to have her two minutes. Well, that man kept interrupting her when she was making her point. And when I saw this, it reminded me of all those meetings, all those meetings where I was interrupted. So I got up the next morning and made the I'm speaking stamp, which is now an art for me. The end. <laughs> and what you're going to do with the stamp? What am I going to do with it? I'm not putting it on everything. Yeah. 
I love it too. It's amazing. Um, let's see, there's another question, Kat Kato. I hope that's, um, I'm saying it right. What kind of papers do you suggest for stamping with inks and doing a pattern that could be enlarged for a large print? Um, well, um, the problem is not the size of the paper. It's more like how, um, how you scan it in, like the resolution, it's, it doesn't, I mean, if the paper is good and your print looks good, you know, it's then the most important thing is that you, um, that you really have a great so resolution when you scan it in and then you can make it into a larger print. I totally agree. So anywhere between 300 and 600 DPI is what you want to scan it in as, and then you might have to go into Photoshop a little bit and tweak it a smidge and then save it as a high resolution photo or, or image and then send it to the printers. Um, Mary Lee asked, Sarah, do you use vintage photos in your work? Vintage photos in my work? No. Doesn't. Okay. And then in the, um, in the chat, I see, um, uh, how big is the art foamy I'm speaking? I think it's four by three. I mean, it's, it's relatively small. And then we, you know, um, I've, I've talked to Kay and we are thinking about having the ability to make, to make some that are larger or smaller. Mm -hmm. So, but that'll be probably for the fall release. We might have some changes with the, the sizing, but I believe it's four. Yeah, it's four by three inches. Cool. Okay. So, um, I'm, we, we can look back at the questions, but are we ready to open our boxes? Okay, so the theme for next time that we told each other is we're talking about, I can't do that, right? Yes. And then we were coming up with, what are we gonna do to kind of set off that whole like, when you're, you know, we will talk about it in detail later, but it's like when you're like, I can't, I can't do this or that, like, how do you overcome those hurdles? And what we thought was we're going to send each other boxes yes. with items that um, we kind of, it's also, also kind of challenging. Yeah. And the other person has to use it. Yes in some artwork that we will show them next time. So what you're gonna yeah. see now is us unpacking what the other person sent to us. We have no idea. Right. And then in the next episode, we should have a finished um, piece for you. Yeah. All right. I didn't, I didn't remove the paper because I hate spoilers. So <laughs> here it is. Okay. <laughs> and you even you just just for good measure you. <laughs> I said no, <laughs> not opening. <laughs> so well, we have to explain. In the box were the books that we made for last uh, time. Yes. So we both took the books out of the boxes, and then I basically put the no on top of this one. <laughs> Don't cut yourself on camera. That would be really. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> All right. So the first thing is, it looks to be. Let me. I think it's ink. My favorite thing. Yes. <laughs> Woo. Ink. Okay. Is it? Yeah, I love ink. Liquitex ink. Okay. Green permanent. SAP green permanent. All right. All right. All right. Okay, let's open up the next one. What you got? One canoe, two. Ooh, color pencils. You're really stretching me. Yes. <laughs> I was like, okay, you're using all the inks, like the ink pads. And fabric markers. 
Okay. <laughs> Challenge accepted, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> okay, so my box. Dun, 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 dun. Bubble wrap, always good. Okay, what's this? Yeah, I'd also wrap. <laughs> There's no no on there, though. No, I didn't put a no on there. Superstars. Oh my God. It's um it's a photo book, I think, right? Yes. Cool. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. I love the cover. Isn't that cool? Let's see. What's this? What's this? What? <laughs> oh my God. Um this is our Da Vinci, uh, like a panel. I think it's wood and then there's um, smooth gesso on top of it. Yes. Oh, that's really small, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're really challenging me on that one. Yeah, yeah, open the last one. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's... Oh my God, how, what am I going to do with all three of this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think the, the super touch here is this. Yeah. Very cool. The at the bottom. Those are like, what well, was my favorite thing on the purse. These are so cute. They are adorbs. This is a pretty cool bag, actually. I know. So wait, so the question is, do we have to use um, all three things in the same word? <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna change it? We're using all of it. I'm gonna use all of the things. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I know that we are doing all of the things, but my question was, um, it's more like, does it have to be one piece or oh, no. can it be different pieces? Different pieces. Yeah. Okay, cool. What do our, yes, yes, yes. I don't know what they mean with this, like what you want, right? <laughs> no, I think, I think, I mean, like basically, come on guys, I can't. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Virgin That's says, so cool. Virgin says one piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Birgit. No, I think, I think it could be several pieces if you, if you want to, but you know, like, or a collection. So they or a collection. Who are Ooh, a serious? Yes, a collection. <laughs> You're already thinking about it, don't you? <laughs> so um, that means next time we are going to show you guys what we made with it. Yes and uh we were to talk about what we were inspired by and how we made it and then debut it to all of you no sneaks right no sneaks none we were good we hadn't opened that box for a month come on now we did very good it was really hard i had to basically hide it from myself <laughs> No kidding. Like, I mean, I, I love the, like, you know, doing it on like together and that's fun. But I always also was like, maybe I can touch it. And I was like, no, 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 put the thing away. No touching, touching time is over, right? So <laughs> we have one more question. Gabriela asked, Natalie, do you know where to get the art foamies in Europe, Germany, Switzerland? I actually really don't know. Um, that's a tough one. Um, but I, I know that, I mean, I ship internationally. Unfortunately, I know it's pretty expensive um, for everyone internationally. I think Art Foamies um, also um, sends them out. Um, I don't know. I have to, I, because I haven't been in, Europe for a while teaching now 
I don't know who carries um, carries a lot of stuff, um, especially the material, maybe not the art foamies per se. Um, well, that is special. This is special foam, right? So I don't know. I, I besides German named um, Muskomi, which I don't know, Gabriela, if you're from the German speaking uh, part of Switzerland, I wouldn't know where to get this like really thick uh, foam. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where you get that foam, to be honest. I mean, it's a special foam that art foamies get. And yeah. I think they will kill us if we if we knew they yeah. would kill us if we would tell them. <laughs> Challenge accepted, man. Yes, we did it. <laughs> what is the most what what of the three things that I sent you are you the most um, challenged about? The color pencils. I knew it. You look so unhappy. I was like, oh, Ig, yes, yes, yes. And then, okay. <laughs> Man, that is like, that was a phase of a very sad kid at Christmas day. <laughs> like jammies, really? <laughs> like, what, what? <laughs> oh, thank you, Anne Lou. I will do it. I will do it. I will do it. I we said do. we can we can do this. We yeah. can do it. <laughs> okay, so uh, we hope you guys come back. We don't have the registration link uh, yet up for the next up episode, but we will post it soon. Um, it's going to be, uh, as always, the first Tuesday of a month. So uh, mark your calendars. Um, and I hope you guys come back and you had some fun. And send us some questions too. If there's something that you want us to ever, you know, do or talk about. So thank no, no, you bought me socks. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for everybody joining us. We'll look forward to seeing you next month with Sarah and Nat. Nat and Sarah at collab. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.